What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Infamous Ghost Money here. And today I wanna to speak with you guys about two very common scamming techniques that's catching thousands of people on a daily basis. What we talking about today? We are talking about phishing and spoofing. I decided to make this video in order to raise awareness on what these scamming techniques are and how they carry out in everyday life so you can stay one step ahead of these scammers and protect your hard earned money. Before we get into it, I wanna give a shout out to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. Right now we're in the process of making some changes so I appreciate your patience. But as always, if you find value in this video, hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to keep getting this important content on how to protect your money. Also by you liking the video, subscribing and leaving comments, it helps get the video in front of more people who may not even know that they need this important information. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, before I get into what phishing and spoofing is, it's important you understand what something called social engineering is. The technical definition is, social engineering is the art of manipulating people so they give up confidential information or unknowingly carry out fraudulent acts. Pretty much anything where an individual is tricked into doing something can be considered social engineering. Phishing and spoofing is a very popular form of social engineering in which scammers send out fake forms of communication, mainly electronically, that resembles a trusted company that an individual may do business with. Phishing and spoofing are two methods that work hand in hand, but each serve specific purposes. Spoofing is a cyber attack in which scammers try to mimic a legit person or business. For example, if your email address is johnlennox at gmail.com, someone can attempt to spoof your email by creating an email such as John Lennox, which appears to be Lennox at gmail.com, but really they're replacing the L with a capital I. This would be an example of email spoofing. Another form of spoofing that's very popular is telephone number spoofing. This is when scammers are able to disguise their telephone number to appear different in your call ID screen. I'm sure you've gotten a call from a random number at some time or another that looks oddly similar to yours. Now, trust me, that's no coincidence. This is a common spoofing method used because for some odd reasons, we are more likely to pick up random phone numbers that look similar to our own number. When it comes to phishing, phishing is the act of tricking individuals into giving up confidential information by creating interfaces that look just like legitimate sources. For example, a scammer could create a fake web login page that looks exactly like your bank login page. When you enter in your information into the website, it'll send that info directly to the scammer. And the crazy part is you'll probably never know you just got your information stolen because the fake website will direct you to the legit location, leaving no obvious trace that you just inputted your information into a fake website. Phishing is extremely dangerous because anyone with decent graphic designing skills can create an interface and find a way to trick people into using it. Phishing and spoofing work hand in hand because the attacks usually begin by spoofing a legit source and getting someone to interact with it and eventually fish the information. All right, I wanna provide some real world examples of what spoofing and phishing looks like in real time. One of the biggest components to social engineering attacks like many other fraud techniques is, is it's a numbers game. Many of these spoofing methods may appear clearly fugazi, but think about it. If you sent this to 100 people, do you think everyone will be just as wise as you and not click it? How about 1,000? How about 10,000? All it takes is for a couple of people to fall victim for a scammer to get access to a large amount of money, so it's not that hard. Here we got two examples of online banking, spoofing, and phishing methods. How this technique works is by playing on an individual's concern, curiosity, and acting rashly out of urgency. You may randomly receive this email and may not even bank with this specific institution. When you click the link, you can potentially be exposing your device to malicious software. Or you can even be faced with an additional screen that looks just like a legitimate website asking for additional information. Some individuals who get hit with this scamming technique will actually bank with the institution, might act quickly, clicking the link and inputting their online banking username and password and potentially any other personal information. Once that information is entered, it is routed directly to the scammer for them to have their way with your accounts. This is also one of the major ways that people get their credit and debit card information stolen without even being aware of it. 
Similar techniques are also used on other popular services like PayPal and Amazon. Similar to the last technique, it plays on a naive individual's tendency to act rashly in trying to protect their money, but really they are giving up information directly to a scammer. Now, phishing and spoofing doesn't just stop at the individual level. It gets even crazier when it's escalated to a corporate level and many times even a governmental level. When it gets to that point, it's considered a business email compromise scam or BEC for short. Many of these scammers thoroughly research major organizations looking to get familiar with the key players and get their contact information. And from there, they either attempt to take over the email or create a clever spoof that could fool an internal employee. As you can see here, we have an example from last year where Puerto Rico fell victim to a hacker who compromised an email of an employee who worked in the Puerto Rico employee, employee retirement system and got them for nearly $3 million, just like that. Here we have even more example of how different US government agencies were hit up in the recent years. In September 2020, a county government was almost got for $1.6 million. December 2019, a government agency was tricked into sending $4 million in governmental funds, which is crazy, $4 million. July 2019, a small city government was swindled by a spoof of a known contracting company and got hit with, loss, with a loss of nearly $3 million. And in 2018, several employees in a county office were spoofed into rerouting payroll and took a loss of nearly 20,000 bucks. This is big money here. So as you can see, no one is potentially above a really sharp spoofer and fisher. Here you can see the statistics that were gathered in the year 2020 around the top scams. Phishing, spoofing, and business email compromise scams have some of the highest victims. As far as monetary losses, business email compromise scams takes the pie with the largest losses coming in at $1.8 billion in 2020. $1.8 billion. Spoofing comes in at $216 million and phishing coming in at $54 million. All in all, just to put it straight, that's a lot of money, people. The scary fact with phishing and spoofing is it's becoming increasingly popular and even easier for scammers to pull off. All-in-one phishing kits are being sold on the dark web at a ridiculous rate, allowing anyone with some basic PC skills to pull off this scam. Here's an example of a kit I found online from a popular bank. As you can see, it looks very legit, and if you aren't paying attention to all the details, anyone could be easily fooled into inputting their information. These kits come ready to go for many popular services that we all use daily. These phishing kits combined with some clever spoofing techniques are pretty much all scammers need to pull off this scam. And once the money is gone, the likelihood of you getting that money back is very slim. You see, with phishing and spoofing, it's very unforgiving because it relies on the victim to carry out the act without even being aware that they're being manipulated. Now, when it comes to defending against phishing and spoofing, the most important thing to have is awareness. In today's day and age, we are so accustomed to doing everything fast thanks to technology. Think about it, emails, text alerts, notifications. We are bombarded with hundreds on a daily basis and it is really easy to go into autopilot while you're navigating through them. When it comes to replying to emails, answering phone calls or whatever it may be, you always want to think first and then respond. Think first and then respond. If you randomly receive a text or email alerting you, notifying you about your account, never click the link in the email, never click the link in the text. The best thing to do is to log directly into that website manually or call the company up directly over the phone, not through the phone number you see in the email, of course. You want to get the phone number directly off the company's website. If you randomly get an email about a service or an account that you aren't even aware of, us, basic human nature, you might be tempted to click it to look even further into it. Like, I don't even got this service. What's this all about? Don't do it. It is best, once again, you contact that company directly or navigate to the company's website. Don't click any links on that email. Navigate to the website directly. 
and attempt to see what's going on or see if there was an account made underneath your name or your email. Also, for people who work in positions where you handle a lot of money electronically, be very careful of how you are handling your emails so you do not fall victim to a business email compromise scam. Make sure you are aware of your company's policy around spoofing and phishing, and if they don't have one, I highly recommend you speak with upper management about the threat that spoofing and phishing could potentially have on the business. I might have just helped you get a promotion or a raise. Holla at me. Most companies also have internal emails. Always make sure you review the email address of who you are sending and receiving email from. Don't blindly just click links or send out information without understanding the reason. If it seems weird, don't be afraid to look into it further or get some support. And lastly, be sure to report all external soliciting emails or spam emails directly to your IT department if you have one. And if you don't, just move it to your spam box immediately. Don't even play around with it. So there you have it, folks. If you didn't know already, you know now, spoofing and phishing is very common, but it's very dangerous and it should not be taken lightly. Yeah, many spoofs and phish attempts might come across as clear scams and they look obviously crazy and bogus, but that's what makes the really good spoof and phish attempts even deadlier because they are that on point. Also, remain aware while navigating through this digital world, and I hope the information I shared in this video is useful and helping you protect your hard earned money and also your identity. As always, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel so you can get more of this content and also leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Have you dealt with this in, in your life personally or if you know anybody who's dealt with it, I would love to hear about your experience. And also if you've been around for a while on this channel, once again, I apologize for being MIA for some time. I want to know what you guys think about this new video format. I would love to get your feedback. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys. Peace.